Hello everybody and welcome back. So, I'm finally recording a video normally, instead of in portrait. <laughs> Landscape, that's what this is called. There we go. Okay. So, hooray. I'm finally doing something like a normal human being. That's a first. <clears throat> but, let's just get into this. Um, so, Today, we are going to be talking about the Thornton Village Inn, which nowadays is actually better known as the Taste of Freedom Inn, located in Tottenham, for anybody who may want to come check it out. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, why am I talking about this? Um, I am going to be covering this because it was a pretty Holmesian story. If we're being honest here, this whole town's history is remarkably Holmesian for somewhere that has nothing to do with him, allegedly. Anyways, um, yeah, no, allegedly has nothing to do with him. People want to, people can call me a conspiracy theorist all they want. He was here. Like, he's been here. There is no way he has not. But that's a topic for another time. Alright, so. This inn actually wasn't an inn or a hotel or anything even remotely close to that when it started. It was a bank. It was actually a branch of the Bank of Montreal. Um, and <clears throat> that was this town's first bank. And it was pretty significant because that made the village of Tottenham the smallest town in this entire country to have a registered bank. That was a pretty big deal because they also just got a railway line put in as well, um, part of the Canadian Pacific Rail. Um, so that was huge. We were getting put on the map. We have a bank now. We're thriving. The town it's got like nobody in it, but we're thriving. We're making a name for ourselves. And um, yeah, so the person who ran this mill was actually, or the bank, sorry, was really well liked by just about everybody in town because this same person ran the mill that is just up the street from it. It is still there. You can still check it out, um, like it's not even five minutes away. And he had initially built the house that is right across from the inn for him and his family to stay in. Um, that house is also still standing. I'm sure that plenty of modifications have been made, but it still has the original iron fence out front, which is a pretty cool piece of history. And everybody kind of knew this person to be just like a really great guy. Um, I don't remember the whole like list of achievements and stuff. And I don't have a script, I'm just doing this by memory. So if it's a little disjointed, that's why. Um, but yeah, so really nice guy, really great. Everybody loved him. I think he probably ran for mayor at one point. Um, so everybody overall just thought he was a really awesome person and so when he became the bank manager everybody thought oh my god this is great like he's gonna do wonderful whatever um and so all was going fine until ooh, i want to say 1892 we're gonna put a question mark beside that one because the 1890s feels a little late for this one i remember 1892 being a significant year i think that's actually the year that the fire happened but that's another story and my storage is running low okay so let's get a move on so i can clear out some old videos all right so basically what happened was sometime in the late 1800s it was revealed that he actually had money in the Chicago stock market and he lost it. 
all of it. So he emptied out the bank's vault and he ran. And he left for South America. And at the time, the inn was actually being built, I think, just beside it. Um, because he was known for throwing a lot of, like, parties and stuff there. Um, and, like, just being a socialite. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. Um, and, yeah, out of nowhere, he emptied at the vault and he ran. And he was never actually found. Nobody knows where he ended up, but it's very well documented by the detective who was following him. Actually, private detective. I believe it was. Um, I think the police gave up the search like way early on. Um, but yeah, that's a general rundown and I'm getting cut short because of my storage. So that's one fun little spooky story time. If you want a more detailed history that is available, if you look up Tottenham Ghost Walk, um, one of the first links it should be talking about the person who runs it um, and they'll have a link to her actual page actually let me see if I can pull it up here quickly before I run out of storage Is this it? Yes, okay, so it is on a website called Bandcamp. Um, I will be linking the, I will be linking this story in the description if you want to actually go check it out. Um, around Halloween time, usually around like the second week in October, uh, this happens, uh, like the actual tour to Ghost Walk happens. If any of you are in Canada and within a reasonable distance, I would suggest coming on out if you're interested in hearing more about this. It's much more interesting to be here in person and actually get to walk around the town and see all of the haunted locations. It's a great time. I, um, I've done it myself. If I end up having free time and can come back here next year, I would love to volunteer with her. Um, but yeah, no, so, Thanks for watching, and this was not detailed in the least, but I'm, I'm running real short on time here, so I gotta cut this off. Alright, bye!